Hello everyone, my name is Webweaver and welcome back to Ohio, Ohio Gaming, Ohio, Ohio. Gaming Moment. And what are we gonna do today? It's quite simple as that. Random backstory, random item statistics, and of course, we're gonna take a little bit of Kiturufu, the dreaming one. Eldritch Parasite, huh? You know, I feel like we get that disproportionately. I feel like when we hit random, we're more likely to see Eldritch Parasite than we are to see anything else, because we always see Eldritch Parasite when we hit this button, or at least it's more notable or memorable because it happens quite a lot. I remember there was a time when like, we kept having to re-roll runs because I just kept getting Eldritch Parasite every single time in a row, and it was so crazy. Well, we're here. And I have a plan specifically for Eldritch Parasite, okay? At least I think I do. And that plan starts with you getting an encoding overloaded as a treat, you know? Just as like a little treat. And I have to say, I am in remiss. So this is going to hopefully be a video because I've been writing the script and recording footage as I've been going along, but I have been doing a like pre-dawn trail like challenge. Uh, I have like a list that I need to do before dawn trail comes out. You already know we're on the Final Fantasy anecdotes. And it's kind of a ridiculous list, and I just finished, like, a big portion of it, which is leveling my character from level 30 to level 80 so I can do the Endwalker MSQ. And it was awful. It was terrible. And so I just finished the Endwalker MSQ. I unlocked it, like, um, 20 hours ago. And then I just spent, like, the next 12 hours. I think I could have done it faster, but nobody was playing. Nobody was queuing up. I'm a healer. And you're making me wait 15 minutes plus for a queue on a, on a popular dungeon that people use for leveling and, like, story-relevant trials? Like, what the hell, man? What the hell, sister? What the hell, brother? I'm not, like... I don't want to be impatient here. Like, DPS players, you know, they gotta wait, like, 20-plus minutes normally. But, like, I'm a healer, and it's a Sunday morning. It wasn't even that early, you know, when I was queuing up for, uh, whatchamacallit, the, the final boss. Oh, what mystery do I want to do here? I don't really like any of them. I don't really like any of them, to be honest with you. I don't really want to do any of them. I guess we could do Akamanto and just shoot him to death, but, ugh. Like, when I was queuing up for the final boss, right? When I was queuing up for the final boss, you know what they got me on? You know what, what they, what they got me on? I had to wait almost 20 minutes at like 11 a.m., 12 a.m., and it's like, what the hell? Or like 12 p.m., and it's like, what the hell, man? Like, I, I, don't, I don't mean to sound like, you know, crazy or whatever, but that's just permanent damage, so there's nothing we can do about that. That sounds good, and let's just let's just get on it. Let's just get it. Let's just jump into it. Let's just jump into it. And like I had to wait for that one, but I, I was waiting for the Atia scope for like 15 minutes, and I'm like, I could have I, I could have been like, you know, 75% through this dungeon, 50% through this dungeon with the trusts already. So I didn't even bother. But like, it's nuts how long I had to wait for some of this shit. And, you know, normally, healers, you get a Q as a healer in, like, throughout my entire time playing the game, right? You get a Q as a healer pretty much instantly, normally. At least that's what I'm used to. Like, the entire time I was, like, leveling and playing the game through for the first time, whenever I had anything, I would just be like, okay... I, I got it, and then, like, I hit the Q button, and then it instantly pops. 
And, like, for DPS, like, it, it took, like, 20, 30 minutes to get a dungeon. Like, I was used to that, too, because it, it takes longer for DPS players to get dungeons. But as, like, a healer waiting almost 20 minutes, it's like, nah, I'm doing that shit with the trust. I should have done that shit with the trust ASAP, you know? Immediately. There's no point in waiting. Thank God one of the trials can be done with the trust. I wasn't going to wait for that shit. Hell no. But the final boss, you have to do it with other players. Uh, yeah, sure. Just give me some doom, if you don't mind. You have 30 health, right? Hell yeah. Now, we are probably going to take a beating anyways, because I don't really want to do... Because if we miss one of these bullets, like, we literally lose, right? So, it's a better idea for me to just take the three damage and live my life. I could have handcuffed him. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna handcuff him. I'm sorry. It's such a, it, it's value. It is. It is. It is decent value. Yeah. I should have, I should have done that. I wasn't paying attention to the math. School scissors, fear festival, violent. This is horrible, man. What the hell? All right. I guess we'll go fear festival, and then we'll go violent vigil. It's like a little treat. I wasn't paying attention if one of these places was doomed or not. So, you know, that's a little scary, but garbage, garbage, and garbage? If I take Outdoorsman, I think it pops, doesn't it? Like, I'm pretty sure we can... I'm gonna take Outdoorsman. You're, you're gonna think I'm crazy, you're gonna think I'm nuts, but I, I think I'm true and correct. I think I'm real for that one. But yeah, so I basically, you know, 12 hours, a few breaks in between was finally able to finish 6.0 and I have all the patches to do and the thing is I have completed Endwalker a lot because I really I really liked raiding in um whatchamacallit like early Anabasias and I never went as hard as I wanted to and I'm gonna go much harder in uh, Arcadian I don't care what how good the Arcadian tier is I'm gonna go really hard on it and there's a reason for that by the way there's a reason for that and I will... Second enemy, Akamanto, by the way. That's kind of crazy. And I'll, I'll show that to you right now, okay? We're going to do a little bit of window capture gaming. Now, I'm going to go to the illegal website that I am on purely by circumstance because everybody else uses this website and uploads my scores uh, without my knowledge, okay? So, you know... Help us by disabling your ad block. Okay, sorry. Sorry, chef. I'll, I'll disable the ad block. No items found. <laughs> it said disable ad block. I disabled ad block. There are no ads. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. But I did disable, I did disable ad block. Anyways. So, this is my shame, okay? This is, this is dog shit. I don't know why it's sorted like this. I don't know why it's sorted like this. Can I just be the fight, please? I don't know why it's not sorting them in chronological order. That's driving me insane. I just want to see them. Like, I wanted to go by, like, you know, Kokyotis, Pandemonium, Themis, Athena, Palace Athena, but it, it's not... I don't know why it's sorting like this. This is bothering me a lot. Um, yeah, no, that's... This is kind of driving me crazy. Yeah. Well, anyways, I'm gonna stop hitting the button now. So, you know, this shit sucks. Like, this is miserable right here. You know, on Kokyotis, an easy fight that I have 12 registered kills on, my best was a 48, brother. That shit's terrible. Then, moving on to the second fight. Why I... Listen, it's insanely bothering me that it's sorted like this. I hate this so much. But the second fight, Pandemonium. You know, I got a 47 on that shit. And Pandemonium, I spent a lot of time in that fight. I spent a lot of goddamn time in that fight. And yet, here it is. 47 best. Like, that's terrible. And then you go on to the, the third fight, which I admittedly did the least, because we got to Athena, and then we never bothered fighting this guy again. Like, we literally only killed him four times, and my loot was stolen. 
I, I I'll remember that until the end of time, and I say that lovingly. Um, so you know, forty six. I don't really care. This fight sucked. Like, uh, here's the thing. It was a fine fight. It was just boring as hell. Like nothing happens in this fight. Nothing happens in Themis. Nothing happens in P11S. Absolutely nothing happens in P11S. And then Athena, the only number that I actually can be proud of, a 76. I was cooking. And that was a bad run, by the way. That was a bad run. It could have been a lot better. And then Palace Athena, like I said, when we cleared Phase 2, the Echo was out. And so we cleared it with Echo. And then we did one run for just having a parse number. And the thing that sucks about this is this was a terrible run for me. Like, this was an awful run for me. I think I died. So that's why it's dog shit. I, listen, I have no idea why it's sorted like this. It's still bothering me. I really hope that if I go to Asphodelos, it's sorted properly. Thank you. But, like, if you look at my Asphodelos, I did so much better in that. I also raided way more. Like, I basically doubled the amount of clears in my first tier than I did in Anabasios. I guess I got tired at the end. Um, also, I don't know why I'm dressed in my Gatherer gear, which is just the Cryo gear set. I don't know why. Well, the boots are different, but, you know. Uh, I really did, like... The only thing that I'm I'm sad about here is the medians on Phoenix and Hesperos 1 and Hesperos 2. Because the medians being green sucks, and Hesperos 2 being green is awful. Like, that just kind of sucks, you know? That being a green... Like, that looks bad. Like, I, I... In Arcadian, I am going to have a median of blue on all five fights. I do not give a shit. I will stay in the party finder mines as long as it takes to get a median blue on every single fight, at least. And I want purple bests on all fights as a white mage. I will take, uh, I will take, like, 50s for Pictomancer. Because I'm, I'm expecting to be a dog shit Pictomancer, and I'm going to want to push myself as, like, hard as possible. And then for Abyssos, you know, this is just also kind of embarrassing. Like, median greens and median grays! Like, okay. I did kind of cook on Hephaestos 2. Hephaestos 2 is a hard fight to heal. It is. Like, it, it absolutely is a hard fight to heal, okay? The problem being... I'm still, like, embarrassed that my median was a gray. Like, that's embarrassing. Same thing with Hegemony. Hegemony should not be a median gray. That fight is easy. That fight is insanely easy. That should not be a median gray. And Proto Carbuncle should not be a median green. I, like, this is embarrassing. This, this is horrible. And here's the thing. I want to be, like, perfectly real with everybody here. Is that I don't care what anybody else's parses are under any circumstance. Like, I will happily raid with anyone who is nice and doesn't have, like, a, a massive ego where they are just, like, a toxic piece of shit to be around. I will raid with anybody. It does not matter how much damage you do. It does not matter how good you are at mechanics. As long as you're not an asshole, I will raid with you, right? The only reason why I'm saying this is embarrassing is I want to have high standards for myself. That's it. And I don't even think this is high standards. I think this is, like, baseline, you know? But for me only. You know, you know it's one of those things, like, where if somebody, like, sneezes... This is how I see it, right? This is how I view it, okay? If somebody sneezes, like, you know, and then they apologize, you look at them and you're like, why, the, why are you apologizing? That's so weird. You don't need to apologize for that. You're okay. You're absolutely fine. Don't worry about it. And then... You know, if you sneeze, you're like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm, I want to oh my god, I'm so sorry. That is the difference to me, right? That's the difference to me in how I see it, is like, my parse matters, and it's the, o it's the only thing that matters. It is the only, it is the only thing that matters. 100% it is the only thing that matters. Anybody else's parse, I could not care less. Like, I literally don't care. Even if we're hitting Enrage, and we if we die to Enrage. Like, as long as, like, I, again, 
I'm the only, like, my, my funny number is the only thing that matters. And I want my funny number to be good when we clear. That's it. I, I don't care. As long as you're not, like, actively toxic or having, like, a massive ego drive you to make the experience unpleasant for everybody else. You know, that's the only, that's the only time that I'm like, yeah, get this guy out of here. Is if it's, like, somebody's just, like, a piece of shit, you know? Um, but here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. This is funny. I want to show you something funny. <laughs> this is not real, by the way, okay? So, this is, um, this is not real. The Aglaia raid, it's not real. Because, basically, there was some sort of event that you could use to get, like, uh, there was some sort of event where running this alliance raid was the correct thing to do. And it was just, like, the fastest way or whatever. I don't even remember what it was. But for some reason, there was a bunch of people running this. And I just went in with potions and food because I wanted to clear it as quickly as possible. And I just got, like, a 99 on everything. It's very funny. It's very funny. Yeah, it's very funny. Well, I've given myself some work because I do need to blur the, uh, the boss names for that because that's a spoiler. But I do think... Um, for, to make my life easier, I'm going to hit this. Well, we're terribly sorry. We've lost Emmerdale. Just so that they're separate files so that I know. Uh, now, what do, what the hell are we doing here? I don't want Fujiko. Absolutely not. Now, here's the thing, right? I, when it comes, oh my god, I was so, I'm so true. I'm so right. I'm so correct, aren't I? The thing, okay, so the thing about parsing and, like, funny numbers, right? is when you have a game like Final Fantasy XIV where the entire like aspect of the game is how much damage you do, right? How much damage you do. When that is a consideration or what people think about, if that is whether or not you clear or win, and every job... Okay, so, you know that, like, thing in all, like, the modern MMOs where it's, like, there isn't a support class, everybody is a DPS class. You know you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? There's no support, everybody's DPS, uh, everybody's just about doing damage, right? You would know exactly what I'm talking about. BDO, PSO2, NGS, those sorts of things, right? This sort of, like, new game design where support... Because, like, there are very... The people who want to play damage dealers are overwhelmingly more than people who want to play, like, supportive roles to try to help the team, right? I don't know why I clicked that. I don't know why I clicked that. That was a bad... That was the objectively wrong choice. I don't know why I clicked that. I'm so sorry. Uh, but, like, so for... For fan... Uh, I have no idea why I was about to say Fantasy Star uh, NGS again. But for Final Fantasy XIV, there is a tank. And the tank has to do tank things. And there is a healer. And a healer has to do healer things. The problem, though, is that in optimal content, in, like, efficient groups, you know, when people are playing the game properly, the healer is a glorified DPS job. Because in people who are playing the game properly don't need a healer. And this is proven time and time again during the media tour allegedly i haven't i don't want to know anything about because there's way too many there's way too much information that we find out about the expansion before it comes out it's ridiculous how much information we have about dawn trail when it's two weeks out and the amount of times i've been spoiled because people from the goddamn media tour have been posting on like or people have been talking about the media tour people have been talking about things on uh, social media and i don't have final fantasy 14 muted I really should. I've been spoiled for like three things that I didn't want to know so far, which is really annoying. But people who did the media tour have already figured out how to do the new dungeon without a healer, right? It's like if you are playing in a group that is playing optimally and knows what they're doing, I guess we'll just go to Violent Vigil. Who cares, right? Even if it's doomed, we got some wiggle room here, I think, because we're on Mystery 3. It is doomed, by the way. Let's just try to do what we can to avoid excess doom, and it should be fine. Um, like, people have already figured out how to clear the dungeon without healers. So it's like, you know, we live in this strange... Like, if you have a 
group that knows what they're doing. The healer isn't really doing anything besides trying to maximize the amount of the DPS that they can do to the, the adds and the boss, you know? Like, there's, there's nothing that a healer has to do for the most part. And once you start getting into... I don't know why I did that, by the way. I have no idea why I did that. I mean, I could shoot, but that kind of... Well, I guess we're just going to do this again and see what happens. Please don't miss. Thank you. 80-70? You absolutely... 80-80? You absolutely know it. You are absolutely gaming. Am I stupid? Did I... I kicked? <laughs> I'm gonna cry, man. I'm gonna cry. I, I hit kick, not... I, I hit kick, not punch. Sad. Hey, deft handling. Yippee. I, I cannot believe that. That's so sad. I'm just gonna wear the crestfallen mask right now. We're not getting a we're not getting a compass. But like being a healer in Final Fantasy XIV, it kinda sucks. Like I'm not gonna lie to you. It this this does no damage thrown. It kinda sucks. Because it is a job that is you do the least damage. And you are, your only purpose is a panic button for when people do something wrong. Like, that's why you exist as a healer, is you are the panic button. You're like, oh shit, somebody messed up. I'm, I'm useful for, like, four seconds, right? Like, that's it. Like, I, I'm useful for the second it takes to raise them with a swift raise. Or, a sw or with a swift cast raise. And then... I am useful for full healing them in, like, half a second with a button press, you know? Or I put down my Liturgy of the Bell during a raid wide with a bleed effect, you know? It, it... You're not very useful. You're the least useful role. But you have the potential to be the most useful role, depending on how good or bad your team is, right? Oh, we gotta take the Doom. So, it just, it sucks, right? Because it's like, uh, absolutely given your body needs it. I, can we afford to take six sanity for free? I don't think we can. We just have to hope that our body, uh, that we don't give in and go to sleep again, you know? Just gonna have to hope that doesn't happen me when an unseen force leads your hand to reach for a knife and stab the surprise guest. Dun 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 dun. Spooky. And potentially even scary. School scissors and sailors. Well, I guess we're gonna go to sailors so we can get these uh, injuries cured real quick. Because they are pretty nasty, you know? They are pretty much like, you will die. I almost sold one of the weapons, but I, I like remembered in the split second I was thinking about it that, oh yeah, painkillers are just going to make the parasite stir. But you know what? Maybe the parasite deserves to stir. You ever think about that? You ever think about how the parasite deserves to stir every once in a while, huh? That's what I thought. Um, Awful. Terrible. Scary, even. We need to discard two items. I mean, probably the box cutter and then the broken bottle, right? Because the box cutter throws for one, and we have... Oh, but it's doing six damage? No, 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 no. It throws for one. So we're gonna... We're just gonna get rid of it real quick. Mansion's doomed, huh? I actually didn't need to do that, because I think Doom is, like, the fi the thing that we're okay with, but it does also make the dice roll harder. Yeah, no, get me out of here. I'm okay with running away from any enemy. We have a lot of Doom that we can work with, probably because of the Crestfallen Mask, but, you know, it's important. Put this back on School Scissors, if you don't mind. We're gonna need it. Me and Drenched Rutsu. 
Hey now, that's a little frightening. Hold on. Hey now, that's a little frightening. But yeah, I could rant about Final Fantasy XIV for 80 years. I don't know how we got from Parses to, uh... Well, actually, no, I know exactly how we got from Parses to, uh... Healers doing damage. The thing is, right, your damage is the least. It's the least amount of damage in the raid, even if you're a god. And a 99 parsing healer is not going to be, like, the... It shouldn't be the difference maker for a team, right? Like, the amount of work that a healer would have to do to 99 parse or, like, gold or pink parse, you know? Uh, that work is disproportionate for the amount of benefit that it gives the team. It doesn't give the team... It, does, it basically gives the team nothing, right? Like, it doesn't... It doesn't really give the team anything to work with. And it's also, like, you know, not very... I'm, I'm gonna... You know what? Let's do it. Let's go for knowledge. If we level up again, it'll be funny. Like, it is much easier for a DPS player to marginally improve their gameplay slightly with a little bit of practice and that gives you more of a benefit from having like the best healer in the world damage wise on your team you know what i mean like a like it's way better for your dps players to be doing better than it is for your healer players to be doing better like your your, your healer players their damage it does matter but like a healer player improving is only going to give you so much compared to your DPS players improving, which will be like a noticeable, holy shit, we cleared it like 10 seconds earlier thing, right? Like if you have a cracked DPS, you clear that shit. Like, I, I guess let me put it this way. If you're in a bad party and everybody is doing low damage and you're worried about the... If you're worried about the Enrage and you're thinking that you might not clear it, like the Enrage might be a little bit too hard. Oh, beautiful, wonderful, wonderful. Like if you're thinking about that and you're like, oh yeah, I don't know if we're going to make it. If you have a 99 gold pink parsing healer, you still might not make it. If you have like a purple plus parsing DPS, you're guaranteed to make it, right? Like that's the difference level that that's how much impact that dps has versus a healer like if you have a good dps like one good dps that can literally be the re all right we lose gg gg well played gg gg missed a 90 percent chance it's over there's the friend but i don't think it matters i think it's over it is what it is GG, well played. Can't win them all, etc., etc. But, like, that that's basically what I'm trying to say, right? Is, like, having a good DPS is a way more important than having a healer who's good at being a green DPS. Because the healer's damage is always going to be the lowest. Unless, like, your tank is really, really bad and your healer is really, really good. If you have an average tank, that tank is going to outdamage the healer every single time. Even if that healer's, like, goaded with and without the sauce, you know? And I think that's the, um... that That's why being a healer sucks specifically. Because Final Fantasy XIV, in higher-end, like, sa in mid-core Savage content, every job plays like a DPS. Right? Oh my god. Oh my god, man. There's no way it's the clean sweep. Bow, bow. I mean, it doesn't matter. Oh no. I mean it's over. It's 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 if it's a dexterity check it's over. Are you two claps and then one bow at the end? If it, if it, if it's a dexterity check it's over. If it's a dexterity check it's over. Uh we only have one ally so it's literally impossible to get what you call it. So we got to take knowledge and we just if dexterity's there we lose. If dexterity's there we lose guaranteed. If Dexterity's not there, then we have a chance, but let's see it, chat. Dexterity is not here. It is a light source, so we're taking three charisma. Oh, I don't want to think about this. Hold on. Let me lock in. Gotta lock in, so we're good. 
We're good. We're good. Minus, uh, minus zero, minus three. We're good, Takashi. Do we have anything that'll kill us? I don't think we do. Shoutouts to not taking Insomnia because we would be dead. Uh, light your way. I mean, it literally, like, none of the memory checks matter at all, by the way. Like, literally zero memory checks matter. We have 70 Doom right now, but it was Akamanto. So, amazingly, if you can believe it, we did it. And that is exclusively thanks to Iwa. And the fact that uh, Iwa and Billy Mays. The Iwa Billy Mays Wombo Combo, the tag team to save the world. You love to see it. But listen, I could. I I I need to wrap this up just for my own sake. But basically, in Savage, which is the mid-core content that I spend the most time doing in Final Fantasy XIV, right? If you are a good healer. It doesn't really matter compared to being a good DPS as far as damage is concerned. But because the, the fights are based around enrages and mechanics are... Okay, so mechanics in Final Fantasy XIV are essentially like an eight-player choreographed dance. And if one person messes up their dance moves, they have most likely caused the other seven of you to restart the dance from the beginning, okay? There are points where you can recover, but they are few and far between, and if somebody dies, most people are just gonna immediately wipe, wipe it anyways, because people are brain poisoned. Like, that's something that I had to unlearn, but it doesn't really matter that I unlearned it, because people will still wipe it immediately. Like, if one person dies, when a mechanic is about to come up, they're just going to wipe it, even if that mechanic doesn't need everybody to be alive when it starts. Which a lot of them do, by the way. A lot of them, a lot of mechanics in Final Fantasy, at least in Pandemonium, a lot of mechanics, they start with a cast bar. And if, if there's one person who's dead, when that cast bar finishes, you are guaranteed to wipe, right? And so in that case, yeah, you just wipe it. But, like, people are so used to, like, one person dying and then wiping it without thinking about it that it actually throws some runs that you could have recovered on. Because there are some mechanics where if somebody dies during them, as long as they did what they needed to do, you're not going to wipe. And they had, like, a very specific, like, thing that they had to do because other people have to do other things, and if they die during those other things, they wipe the group. It's really, an, it's kind of crazy. And so... Because of that, because mechanics are these, like, eight-player puzzle dances, you don't really get into a point where you... How do I put this? If your success or failure depends on if all eight people do this choreographed dance correctly... then what that means is unless healing is a component to it, which normally you can probably live like a mechanic if you use mitigation properly, if healing is not like an active component where it's like you are taking constant damage during this mechanic and the healer's challenge, quote unquote, is can they press Medica 2, Asylum, or uh, Liturgy of the Bell, uh, or whatever your, you know, scholar, sage... I don't know, sage has, like, the AoE thing. I don't know what any of the sage's things are called besides phlegma, because it sounds like a ligma. Regardless, is can the healer press one of their cooldowns to heal everybody up while they're also doing the dance mechanic, right? Like, that's about as deep as it goes. Like, do you remember to press, like, one or two buttons while the mechanic is going on? And everybody else is pressing more buttons because they're doing their damage rotation while this is going on, you know? So, for me anyways, the important part is that because of how the fights are designed and how the game works, when you have a healer 
whose job is to recover when things go wrong, and most fights, or at least the harder fights, make it to where if something goes wrong, you start over from the beginning, you can quickly see why or how, like, healer is just sort of like a placeholder role for people who can't adjust, right? Because for really good teams who can adjust and work together and have really good communication, and I'm talking about, like, genuinely impressive communication and genuinely impressive teamwork skills, you don't really need a healer, right? The hardest fight in the game, the Omega Protocol, right? This is it top, the Omega Protocol. That is the hardest fight in the game. I mean, some people say DSR is hard, but I, I have a friend who's progging DSR, and she's like, yeah, it's not that bad. Uh, top looks worse, but she kind of sandbags every once in a while. So anyways... She sandbagged about- she sandbagged about every ultimate she's done so far. Regardless, that's getting a little off topic. In my opinion, the hardest fight in the game, the Omega Protocol, that can- even though that has a mechanic where the intended way to resolve it is to use Healer Limit Break 3, that fight can be done without healers. Now, that is insanely impressive, and the team that did that are legendary, right? They're goats. They're, like, the only people who could ever have done it, right? The amount of time and effort that they put into making that possible is insane, right? It's genuinely impressive. But I also think it's a damn shame that it's possible, right? Like, I'm not mad at them, because what they did is insane, incredible, like, mind-blowing, groundbreaking. But it's sort of like, to me, is indicative of why healers sucks. Because it's like, you can have a mechanic in a fight that requires healers, and then people will just not take healers, even though no other role can do healer LB3. It doesn't matter, you know? Like, it, it, it just, it does not matter, because you still don't need healers when, they're re when the game developers require you to have a healer, there is a way to work around it to the point where a team has done it, you know? Not like a Taz thing, not like in theory it's possible. Real human beings with human reaction times were able to do something that the developers didn't think would be possible or didn't want it to be possible. And that, to me, is sad. Because it really makes the, the healer job feel useless when it's like, okay, uh, you are mandatory to exist in this fight? Oh, wait, sorry. There's a team that's cleared it without you. Without your role, without your job. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why I am going... Like, when Arcadian drops, I am rating it as White Mage 100%, and I am clearing it as quickly as possible on White Mage. But... And I will be progging week one, which is going to be hell. But I really want to try week, week one prog. I want to see how far I can get. Um, I'm not world first racing or anything. No way. I'm not I'm not that good. I'm going to be in the mines with friends, you know. But, um... How do I put it? It's like, after that... Like, after I've cleared Arcadian 1 through 4S, and I'm, like, I've cleared it, I am going in it again as Pictomancer. And for my main static that I'll be raiding with for, you know, the entire tier, for, like, the entire expansion, I'm going to, if they let me, I'm going to be Pictomancer. And I'll be able to spend a lot of time practicing my Pictomancer rotation because it's like a mid-core casual group, so they're not going to clear, you know, they're not going to try to clear as quickly as possible, you know? Well, you know, they're not gonna, like, how do I put it? Like, that sounds wrong, because obviously everybody in that group is trying to clear, including me, is trying to clear as quickly as possible. Sorry, I had to sneeze. I muted myself just in time. Uh, but, like, obviously everybody in that group is trying to clear as quickly as possible. It's just that, like, they are not going to go out of their way, you know? We have our designated raid time, which starts, and then three hours later it stops 
and then we do that twice a week. And that is the, you know, that that's what we're putting into it, you know? So it's going to take us like a couple of months, a few months to get through it. And then if it's like a really hard final fight, it might take us like six months plus. Because that's how it's been historically. Um, but that's perfectly fine by me. Like, the group's great. I love the group. And that's ultimately what matters, is that, like, I have fun raiding, you know? But for Arcadian, for the, for the Arcadian tier, I am going to go as hard as possible in raiding. Because I want to have, like, something that I can look back on. Because I'm looking back on my parses, you know now and it's like wow i suck <laughs> so i want to have something that's nice i want to have something that's nice to look back on my first my first expansion for savage rating was mediocre i want to have something better to look back on you know what i mean i want to have something better nicer to look back on so that's um that's what i would like should we do a little pokey doku you've been waiting long enough should you should 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 we get a little pokey doku i don't see why not i think i got plenty of time all right, Grass and Psychic is a little scary, because I should know what this is. Grass and Mythical? I mean, we just did this. Me and Shaman Ritsu. Of Grass evolved by item. I mean, we could just do Leafeon. But I'm also thinking, isn't it like, uh, isn't it like Blossom? No, no, let's, listen, I'm not going for... I'm not going for anything crazy, all right? Let's just... What the hell is Unova? Is that, like, black and white? Would that be Sil... Would that be, like... I don't even think it would be Sylveon. Psychic Grass. What the hell is Psychic Grass? I feel like I should know a Psychic Grass type. A Water Psychic type. What the hell? Water mythical. Did we establish that Volcanion was mythical? Yes, we did. Okay, I'm. Oh yeah, listen, I have to do a gen check. I'm sorry, I have to do a gen check. I Unova. That's black and white, right? Okay, so it's black and white. I have no idea. I'm cooked. Like what? what like what do you mean? Like what? What the? I I, I don't know anything about Unova. Uh, Grass and Psychic. I feel like I should know what this is. And then Water and Psychic? I feel like I should also know what this is. But, like, I don't know. Maybe, um... Uh... Manphy? Is, it, is Manphy the real one? Or is it the fake one? You know what I mean? Am I... Is, does that sentence make sense? There's, like, two of them? Not a Psychic type? Okay. What it, what is it called? Like it's Fion? No. Hmm. I mean, listen. I I have literally no idea about anything for Unova, so I'm just gonna try to figure out Water Psychic. Um. It's not. Hmm. Oh. Uh. All right. I, I, it, don't tell me. I swear. Psyduck is not, what is Psyduck? A water type? Just a water type or just a psychic type? I'm going crazy. I'm going insane. Uh, Hail Mary on, um. Bro, I don't know. Uh... Uh, grass. Robo passes a rock. I remember that. What the? What on earth? I don't know. Sage is magical. Exec executor. A Bruxish? Okay, a Muna. So, listen, I did actually have in my mind this thing. 
because I remembered like a like, Mersharna. This is what I was thinking of, but I had no idea what it was called. And then apparently Solacis is a psychic type, and I have seen this thing. I know what it is. Sigil Glyph I knew existed, but I did not know it was Unova, so I didn't think about it. I don't know what a Gothitella is or like a a Behe a, a Behem a Dharmatan a Swoop no. I, I didn't know Swoobat was a, um... First of all, I didn't know Swoobat was Unovan, and I also didn't know that it was Psychic type. I saw, what the hell is a Victini? What the hell is a Maletta? I, what the hell is a... I didn't even know Genesect was a Legendary. You're gonna hate me for this? I thought Genesect was a regular Pokemon. I also didn't know it was from Unova. Victini, I did know, I thought it was a Legendary. I didn't know it was from Unova. I don't know what a Keldea is. I don't know what a Maletta is. And, yeah, those are the only ones, right? And then, Evolved by Item Unova. Oh my god, it is Simisage. Simisage mentioned? Whimsicott, Electra? Okay, so if we need Evolved by an item, the Simi Pokemon work, right? So Simisage for Grass, Simisage for Seer, and Simipore for Water. This is tech. Chandelure also is apparently Evolved by an item. I wouldn't know that. Also, Manaphy was a event Pokemon, a mythical Pokemon, so that would have worked. What the hell is a Bruxish? How am I supposed to know? Starmie is a psychic type? I was thinking about that. And then, of course, the slow pokes. I did think of that, but, like, after a Psyduck, it, I was shattered. I was completely shattered, okay? I was, I was unimaginably shattered. I'm sorry, I'm looking up Psyduck right now. I'm looking up Psyduck right now. Psyduck Pokemon. It's a water type. It's a water type. I. It's a water. It's a. I'm. I'm going. I'm. I'm out. See ya. Peace. Stay safe out there. Have a good one. Bye.